Hello, in this video we'll be talking about Visual Studio 2017 and using NuGet. What we'll learn in this video is about what is NuGet, how to add the Entity Framework Core to a console application. We'll learn about the Package Manager console, which is a little PowerShell window, and create a NuGet package. So first off, what is NuGet? NuGet is a central repository for packages you can use with your apps. The packages can contain JavaScript, files, DLLs, etc. Each package is maintained and licensed by the developer of the package. One of the most commonly used packages is JSON.NET. So, in this video, we're going to create a console app, use NuGet to add a package, the Entity Framework Core. We'll create some classes and code that will become tables in the database. We'll add a migration, update the database. So let's switch to Visual Studio 2017. So. Earlier, I created a simple console app of the .NET framework using .NET Framework 4.6.1. So, first thing I did was I right-clicked on the project and selected Add Manage New to Get Packages. So, the one package I added was the Microsoft Identity Framework Core Server. When I installed this package, it did sense all these other packages like the Entity Framework Core, Design, Rational, all dependencies. It also the abstractions, memory, as you can see, the list is quite extensive. Well, it took a few minutes, it figured out all the dependencies it needed, and it went ahead and added the package and installed with the additional. So while we're here, one thing I wanted to show you is that in the new get package options, you have the option of adding more than one source. By default, the primary source is NuGet.org, which is Microsoft's uh, central repository. I've also used some SyncFusion controls, so I have SyncFusion listed in here. But if your company has its own NuGet uh, repository, you could also add this in here. So you might have company-specific uh, DLLs or JavaScript files, whatever, that you want to make it easy to deploy. To the rest of the uh, organization. Okay, another way you can add items to the NuGet or uh, to your application is through the command line. This is the new package manager console is basically a uh, PowerShell window that allows you to install NuGet packages. So if I go over here, copy my uh, code. One other package that we needed to install is the Entity Framework Core Tools, and I told it to install the latest pre-release version. But if I were to just type install pack package Microsoft Entity Framework Core Tools, hit enter, it will do the same thing where I'll go through, figure out the dependencies, ask me to accept the license, and install the package, if there is a license. All right, so let's go look at our code. So first thing I needed to do is, um, I figured I did, would uh, create a database that includes some information about monkeys. So just to show some basic data annotations, first thing I did was I created an ID of integer. This is the primary key for the database. By convention, ID will automatically, if you have it in your class, be an auto number column. That's the primary key. You could also, if you're going to use, for example, my next field is a... Um, monkey type and I told that I wanted it only to be a hundred characters in the database. I could have added a similar deal, thing where I could have put required comma key so that it knows that the monkey type was the uh, primary key. And I also added an integer field saying how long the monkey lives. So how to create a database context. Database context is the class that actually interacts with the database. So I created a class named monkey context and inherits from DB context. And for my tables, I have to create a DB set of the type. So the type I had was monkey. And since there's going to be more than one monkey, I named the property monkeys. So it knows to load all the monkeys out of the field. So one of the uh, functions or overrides I did for the base class of DB context was I overrode the on configuring. I told it that I wanted to use SQL Server 
And I'm just using one of the local DBs for SQL Express. The database name is uh, Monkey Info, and I told it to use uh, my Windows credentials for accessing the database, which is a lot more secure option as, than having a username and password in the uh, SQL Server. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my package console window, and I'm going to tell it to add a migration. So this, what this will do is it will look at my code. Uh, it's going to build it first. It's going to check. All right, so creating the migration, uh, I had slightly different uh, version of the database earlier, so it's just telling me that it might. I added the uh, max length column, so it might say complain that it might lose data, but that's okay for this demo. Then the next thing I'm going to do is type update data base. This will go ahead and go ahead and uh, create the database if it doesn't exist, and if if it does and the columns are slightly different. So you can see when it opens up my SQL Server, it's on the local DB. You can see it created my monkey info database. It added a couple of tables here. First off was the monkeys uh, table that I uh, created. And you can see that since I set it for a max length of 100, that it uh, created an NVAR char 100, has an integer uh, field called lifespan and I have my primary key ID and it's not null. Alright, so I open the class settings back. Alright, I only opened up the migration. So in this uh, demo now, what I'm going to do is run some code that will first create the monkey context. Look, hey, do I got any monkeys in the database? If I don't, it's going to add a bunch to the uh, database, save the changes, write them to the console window, and wait for me to hit enter to continue. So let's run the code. See, it created, it's creating the contacts. It's going to look, hey, are there any records in the database? No. It's going to add the four, the five entries, save the changes. Now it's going to pull the list, and I'm just going to let it run through now. We'll look at the console window, and we can see we have five um, monkeys there. All right, let's run it a second time, just to prove that the data is still there. We're going to look. We're going to look to see if there's any records in the monkeys table. There is. It's just going to include it, and you can see that it ran. Fine. So let's switch back to the PowerPoint. All right, so next we're going to do is we're going to create a new get package. So I'm going to add a class library project. I'm going to show you where to look in the properties. And then finally, we can, uh, I'll show you where we can upload the package. So next thing I did was I wrote, clicked on the solution and I added a new project. And under .NET standard, I picked a class library. So as you can see, I just added an ID field to this class one. Not that the uh, actual DLL was important, it was more that I wanted to show you that in the uh, build properties for this class library, there's a package tab, and I can check a checkbox saying generate new get package on build. I can go ahead and add in all my version information, project URLs, etc. And build it. And if I uh, open the files in File Explorer, since I built it in debug, I have the uh, new get package created that I could just upload to newget.org. Or I, I could right click on the uh, project and select publish also. But 
NuGet should be open. Once you sign in, it'll give you the option to upload. And there's an upload tab here that you could uh, upload to. All right, let's switch back to the PowerPoint. So in summary, we learned about NuGet. We added the Entity Framework Core to a console app. We used the PowerShell window, the Package Manager console, to add a migration and create a database. And then finally, we used created a NuGet package.